Good afternoon. Here we are at the Cumberland Mine. We're at the a mile post eight siding, and I wanted to talk to you today about the uh, pretty serious rail defect that we had here. This uh, this right here is called shelling, and uh, not only is it longitudinal, it's also transversal. It's going this way and going back into the railhead. This is a uh, pretty serious. I caught this, it's got a couple sections here on this section of rail, and uh, about six months ago it started getting bad, and uh, it's gotten progressively worse since then. Uh, every week on my weekly track inspections I kept a close eye on this, and uh, we had some about a month and a half ago, we had a uh, contractor in here, and I had, had him down on curve 47, and uh, the rail gang, and I had him come up here and change this piece, and uh, this wouldn't have lasted long. Um, hope you can see this okay. This uh, that reddish brown color in there. That's. Uh, that's called bleeding, okay? And uh, most likely what would have happened this winter, we got the water in here and it, it would have uh, froze in there and part of this uh, railhead would have just, uh, probably not the whole head, but I'm just, just the running surface, good section of it, especially down in this one right here, would have just blown out, so. I was real happy to get this piece of rail changed, and uh, let me uh, tell you this: these defects are are classified under the uh, large heading of what's called longitudinal anomalies. Further under that, underneath that heading, this would be called a detail fracture. Uh, some people would call it a head check detail fracture and head check the water would have got right in there and just froze that and traffic over it would have blowed that out um, now this particular there's a we can uh, go a little bit further under that heading of detail fractures in uh, we'd have a gauge check or a field check this was on the inside of the rail here and that, so that would be a gauge check. If it was out here, it would be called a field check. Okay. Um, so this is your track. So like I said, the, uh, the inside part of the track here, this would be the gauge side. This would be the gauge, and then this would be the field side. So that's a, uh, that kind of stuff's a part of uh, railroading that you... Uh, don't get to see on your rail cams and uh, my uh, my goal was to make a whole series of videos on rail defects so uh, this is another one I've added to it I've made several already um, let me give you another little piece of information here um, this, this part up here is called the rail head. This is your running surface. This is the fillet. And this is your web. And this is your base. Okay? Um, the rail actually has three planes to it. This would be the cut here. This would be the transversal plane. Um, and you'd have a horizontal or longitudinal plane going this way. And then your vertical plane would be up and down here. That uh, chalk mark, on this is newer, newer rail. A chalk mark means uh, for the mill to know to uh, drill holes in the end of it. I'm going to 
that's shelling down there. Actually, is really bad, the one I just showed you. I'm going to come up here and show you the, uh, that's our hot wheel detector. Uh, I made several videos on that hot wheel detector, too, if you want to go back and listen to the guy go off. This up here is the beginning stages of shelling. It's not real bad yet, but I'll show you what, it's, what that section down there started out as. See that along there? That's the very beginning stages of uh, shelling. Getting a little bit worse here, but it's not real bad. Now, that's kind of curious, that, uh, that piece down there. That was original rail. It was rolled in 1975. And we started running coal here in uh, 1977. Now, the rail industry really has no definitive answer why shelling happens it obviously gets worse by the heavy traffic over it um and that that piece there is really curious if uh you thought there would be a problem with a, a car wheel or a, something with the geometry on the track that you would have more pieces in that uh, curve that were bad this, curve, this piece was right in the middle of the curve. And all the pieces on either end were in pretty decent shape. A little bit of shelling, but nothing like this. So, uh, kind of, my theory on that is, this particular piece had some uh, impurities in it. In the, uh, the original rolling of the rail. And it finally, uh, the wear and the tear over the years, finally got to it. And uh, that's why it started uh, shelling out like that. Yeah, and this is severe shelling. You can see a little bit of the, uh, it's not quite as reddish now because it's been out in the light. But this, this, this here is a little bit of bleed. It was bleeding in here too. <coughs> okay. Uh made the uh, hey there's something else I wanted to show you too while I'm on here. I just remembered it. Go back and watch that video I made on crushed rail and flowed rail. That was on curve 47. And uh that's the rail we put the new or the curve we put the new rail in here a month and a half ago. But uh I told you about the uh, three different steel companies and the Rocky Mountain Steel out in Pueblo, Colorado. Um, told you we had some pieces here. Well, here's here's a piece that was rolled in the in uh, Pueblo, Colorado. BT RM SM was rolled in 2004. That's the oh, that RMSM, the uh, Rocky Mountain Steel. So that's pretty neat. And uh, the VT, I've never told you about that either. Um, all rail has to be controlled cooled. And there's a, uh, most of the rail we have is CC, controlled cooled. The VT means it was vacuum degassed. So that's another method of cooling that they have. So anyway, beautiful day here in the first week in November. Um, it's almost 70 degrees today. Sorry about that, Ray um, and Bob. Uh, but that's the way it is, and I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end of this video. 
and uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a really good day.